The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Have you heard the news about Kraft's natural cheddar cheese? It's called K-Brand Natural. K-Brand will delight you folks who love a superb quality cheddar cheese. Delicious. Mellow. Yes, K-Brand is really something to get excited about. Listen for more about K-Brand cheese later. Did you ever have one of those days when everything seemed to go wrong right from the start? Well, that's the kind of a day it's been for the great Gildersleeve. He got up this morning, he shaved, he got dressed, and for two cents he'd have gone right back to bed. But instead, he dragged himself down to breakfast, gloomy and disgruntled. There sat his niece and nephew, smirking. Smirking about what? He'd speak to them later after he'd had his coffee. Beside his plate lay the morning paper. He picked it up. And there, on the front page... Mayor hits at laxity in city departments. Commissioners to punch time clock, he warned. Charging widespread laziness and inefficiency in administration of city departments, Mayor Terwilliger today promised a clean sweep before next year's primary. Certain commissioners, said his honor, growing fat and lazy in political sinecures, have taken to keeping bankers' hours around here. I think it would be a healthy thing if they were required to punch a time clock like other people. Chief among the departments which need jacking up, the mayor let it be known is the... Anki! What are you going to do? Anki, where are you going? Anki! Mr. Gilsley's ain't you... Leroy, what's come over your uncle? Don't ask me. There's a thing in the paper. He's terribly upset, Bertie. You better run up after him. Yes, maybe I better. Anki! Anki, wait! Oh, Jack Booker. Morning, Bertie. Come in, Judge. Morning, Marjorie. Leroy. Hi. Good morning, Judge. Time you children were leaving for school, isn't it? Is your uncle at home? I asked if your uncle was at home. You tell him, Marge. Well, yes, he's at home, Judge. But the thing is, he's gone back to bed. Well, real gentleman of leisure. Evidently, your uncle has not seen the mayor's remarks about him in the morning paper. Oh, he saw them all right. That's why I went back to bed. I failed to follow your uncle's reasoning. The mayor charges him with loafing on the job, so his solution is Well, wouldn't you get mad after you've worked hard all your life to have the mayor come out and say a thing like that? He says he won't go back to work until the mayor apologizes. Boy, Unc really told him off. He really told him. Didn't he, Bertie? He told us. <laughs> Marge went up and tried to talk with him, and all he'd do was... You heard all this, Bertie? I reckon everybody in the block must have heard it, Judge. He was telling the world. I'm terribly worried about him, Judge. He's locked himself in his room up there. Now he won't talk to anybody. Yeah, he's mad at everybody. What did we do? He ain't mad at you, Leroy. He's just mad at the world. Well, has anybody tried reasoning with him? We all have. Marge tried first. It's no use, Judge. He keeps saying nobody appreciates him. That's right. You try to argue with him, and he just keeps yelling, All right, they think they can get along without me? Let him try. Just let him try. He's not himself, Judge. Sounds exactly like himself to me. Well, I'll go up and have a talk with him. I warn you, Judge. He won't talk to you. He won't talk to anybody. He'll talk to me. Gildy. Oh, Gildy. It's Horace, Gildy. I'd like a word with you, old man. Gildy! I know you're in there. I hope you're listening. Because I should just like to say this, my friend. I think you're acting like a perfect boob. You won't get nowhere this week talking him, Judge. All right, stay in there. Boy, a baby. Feelings are hurt. Got to have an apology. Well, Judge? Marjorie, you have a stubborn uncle. You're not kidding. 
Well, what are we going to do? We've got to do something. You know, Uncle Mort, he'll never give in. What can you do with a man like that? There he is, out on a limb and sawing away for dear life. Now, let's see. Who is next here? I think this gentleman. No, no. After you met him. Oh. I'd like a word with you when you're free, Petey. Wait on the lady first. Quite a rush today. There was a lady in this morning, too. Well, madam? I want to return a duck. A duck? Yes. Oh, well, I wonder if you could lift that shopping bag up here for me, young man. Why, certainly. There you are. Thank you. Uh, about this duck, madam, you're quite sure you bought it in here? You see, we don't ordinarily handle it. Of course I bought it here. Just a minute now. If I can get these groceries out of here. Uh, hold that, will you, young man? Only too happy. And can you hold this, too? Gladly. Hmm. Must be down at the bottom. Can you hold another? Go right ahead. Pile them up. If you don't mind my asking, madam, just what seems to be the matter with this uh, duck? It won't work. Won't work? Well, I'll show you. Whoop. Just shove it under my chin. All right, I've got it. Now... There. Oh, a toy duck. Well, what did you think? I bought it from a grandchild for Easter, and now I want my money back. Well, just what seems to be... It's no good. You can see for yourself. It's supposed to waddle and beat the drum. When I got it home, it wouldn't beat the drum. Now it won't even waddle. Hmm. And you bought this last Easter, you say? Yes. That was some time ago. But I can't be running back and forth with ducks all the time. Well, ordinarily, we don't accept return merchandise after 30 days. Well, if you're going to sell bum ducks. Madam, this pharmacy sells only quality merchandise. You call that quality merchandise a duck that won't even waddle? Stop arguing, Peavy, and give her her money back. These bundles are getting heavy. Uh, you're quite sure you wound the duck? Certainly I wound it. Try it yourself. Well, we take the customer's word. Let me see the price on this item. I paid 78 cents. Must be a price mark here somewhere. I'm telling you, it was 78 cents. Price was usually marked under the tail, as I recall it. Peavy, my arms are getting tired. Ah, here it is. 78 cents. Just what I told you. We take the customer's word. <laughs> there you are, madam. 75 and three is 78. Thank you very much and call again. Now, Jay. Madam, your groceries. Oh, Lucky thing you remembered them, young man. I was up to my ears in them. How could I forget? Now, Judge. Wait till she goes, Peavy. Uh, good day, Mrs. Hmm. Her and her old duck. Forget the duck. Never did want to handle those ducks. Every one of them has come back. But if you wanted cleansing tissue in those days, you had to buy ducks. <laughs> I don't know what the pharmaceutical profession is coming to. Tin duck, look at the thing. I wish you'd forget it. There are more important things to worry about. Our friend Gildersleeve has gone and gotten himself in trouble. Mr. Gildersleeve? With the mayor. You saw the item in the paper this morning, I suppose? <laughs> yes, I did. Well, Gildersleeve has done a very stupid thing. He went off half-cocked as usual. Instead of apologizing to the mayor, he's taken the position that the mayor should apologize to him. Refuses to go near his office, in fact, until he does. Mr. Gildersleeve is quite a fellow. Well, it's not very amusing, Peavy. This could cost him his job, if the big boob only knew it. Oh, everybody knows Mr. Gildersleeve. He talks a lot, but I'm sure when he understands the situation... That's he... just it. You can't tell the man anything. He's gone and locked himself up in his room. Wants the mayor to come to him on bended knee. I always liked Mr. Gildersleeve. But he always was a little big for his britches. Well, what are we going to do, Peavy? Well, that's hard to say. Now, you're a sensible fellow. He listens to you sometimes. If he listened to anybody, what we ought to do is to let him go ahead and hang himself. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> After all, he is a friend of ours. A friend of yours, maybe. And a member of the Jolly Boys. The Jolly Boys? Why don't we put this up to the Jolly Boys? 
What are you doing tonight, Petey? Now, never mind. You're coming to the Jolly Boys. The song goes, "'Tis the season to be jolly, and you know that an important part of a jolly good time is good food. That's why we suggest you have plenty of Kraft's latest cheese triumph on hand. This modern cheese masterpiece is called K-Brand Natural. That's K-A-Y, K-Brand. And here's what it is. A delicious natural cheddar with a mellow, rich flavor, the tender, meaty texture that real cheese experts love. But this natural cheddar is made from pasteurized milk. Did you say pasteurized milk? That's right. Every drop of milk that goes into K-Brand natural cheese is carefully pasteurized. Furthermore, K-Brand ages in a new way, too. Every big ten-pound bar cures to a mellow goodness in its own transparent wrapper. All its full-bodied flavor sealed in, protected by this spick-and-span wrapper. There's no cheesecloth, no paraffin coating, no rind at all with K-Brand cheese. I'd say there's no waste at all either. You're right. Every bit of K-Brand cheese is usable for your holiday cheese trays, for open house snacks. Tomorrow, have your dealer cut you a portion from the big wrapped bar with the words K-Brand Natural marked down the top and sides. But be sure to get enough, for this natural cheddar is going to be a holiday favorite at your house. Remember the name, K-Brand, the natural cheddar cheese made of pasteurized milk. Now back to the problems of the great Gildersleeve, which have even infiltrated the Jolly Boys Club. Ah, oh, come on, Chief. Give out. Let's make a little noise here. We can't do much by ourselves, Floyd. What a club. Where is everybody? Might as well have went to a picture with Lovey. Something called a gangster. Don't worry. The boys will be along. How about a little two-handed poker? Now, Floyd. That's not much of a game. Let's wait. Uh, play the piano some more. Don't sound bad at all. Sounds better if there's a quartet to drown it out. Say... If the other guys don't show up, I got an idea. Now, Floyd. We wouldn't have to be out late or anything. I told Hazel I'd be home by 11. Besides, she's got some kind of a fifth sense or something. Anyhow, I... Oh, I think I hear somebody coming. Yeah? Ahoy there! Ahoy, jolly boy! Ahoy! Ahoy! Gosh, I thought you guys would never get here. Well, it's only 8.20. Peavy, where are the cokes? Well, I... Uh... I told Peavy we wouldn't need any cokes this evening. We've got work to do. Work? Work? What kind of a club is this? It's a poor club, Floyd, that never accomplishes anything. We've got a job to do, that's all. What kind of a job? Well, perhaps I'd better explain. No use taking off your muffler, Peavy. We'll be leaving in a minute. What's this all about, anyway? I am about to explain. Our friend Gildersleeve is sulking in his tent. How's that, Judge? You all saw the article about Gildersleeve in this morning's paper? Oh, yeah, I tried to call him up. You know, for laughs. I was going to tell him I was the mayor. But you were unable to reach him on the phone. Yeah, how did you know? Gildersleeve didn't go to work today. As soon as he saw the article, he went back to bed. No fooling. Well, he did. And at last report, which I received at 6.40 p.m. from Leroy, Gildersleeve was still in bed, refusing food, refusing to talk to anybody, refusing to go back to work until the mayor apologizes. Until the mayor apologizes? Well, I don't believe I get Mr. Gildersleeve's angle there. Ah, oh, well, it's his business. And Tewilga may be dumb enough to apologize. Ah, oh, why don't we play a little poker? Peavy, run back to the store and get some Cokes. Well, I... You don't seem to comprehend, Floyd. Mayor Terwilliger told me straight out that if Gildersleeve isn't at his desk at nine tomorrow, he'll get himself a new commissioner. So what are we supposed to do? Gildersleeve will go to work. Don't worry. Oh, no, he won't. He's just that stubborn. And I say it's up to us to save his job. Well, how, Judge? By explaining to him, as his best friends, that he's taking the wrong attitude. We are his friends, aren't we? 
Well? I presume so. <laughs> Certainly. We're fellow jolly boys. Well, gee, I didn't join this club to wet nurse a water commissioner. I joined so I'd have some place to go besides stay home. Floyd, do you realize that Christmas is only a week off? What's Christmas got to do with the it? The Christmas spirit. Uh, Christmas is, well, you know, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. It's certainly a time when jolly boys have got to stick together. Am I right, PV? Well, there are only six shopping days left. <laughs> There's no use standing here arguing. I'm for going over to Gildersleeves and see what we can do. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Some club. Might as well join the book of the month. Well, come on, let's get going. Maybe we can play poker over there. <laughs> His room up front, ain't it? Yeah. Got his light on, I see. Still there, I guess. Did you ring the bell, Jane? Yes, I rang the bell. Imagine him laying in the sack like that all day. That big dope. Now, Floyd, that's no way. If we're going to be helpful, we... Good evening, Bertie. I brought some of Mr. Gildersleeve's friends. Well, sure enough. Come on in, Judge. Come on in, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, Bertie. Hi, Bertie. What's cooking? Hi, Judge. Who... Oh. What's the matter? I thought maybe you brought the mayor to apologize. It's not going to be so easy, I'm afraid. Any uh, new developments, Bertie? Worse and more of it, Judge. I took a tray up and set it outside his room at supper time, but he never touched it. Gee, that don't sound like the commissioner. Did he know it was there? Yes, sir. I rattled the dishes, and then I hollered through the door. No answer. Yeah, I crammed the gravy in front of the keyhole so he smell it. Nothing happened. You sure he didn't sneak out and snitch a piece of bread or something? No, sir. I counted. Well, this is serious. Are you sure he's... I mean... Oh, don't worry. Gildersleeve will never knock himself off. Floyd, for heaven's sake... <laughs> There's a child here. What did I do? He isn't dead. We can hear him moving around every once in a while. Ask Marge. She's been up there listening. Well, good evening, Marjorie. Hello, George. Mr. Peavy, Mr. Munson. Good evening. Hi, Margie. Good evening. Oh, is that you, Chief? I didn't know you without your uniform. Well, I'm, I'm off duty. I like to wear sports clothes. Uh, tell me, is there any change in the uh, situation? No. I heard him move around a little when you rang the doorbell, but then he got back in bed. That's right. I heard him talking around up there. Well, we've just got to explain the facts of life to him, I'm afraid. What do you think? Should we all go up together? What for? We ain't going to serenade him. I think... I think if one of us would simply explain the situation... How about you, Judge? He has great respect for you. <laughs> now, Leroy... The judge tried it this morning. That's true. And while I have stronger arguments now, since talking to the mayor, I still think that perhaps uh, one what of the others... What do you mean about stronger arguments, Judge? Well, uh... The mayor said he'd throw him out on his ear. He Floyd. Said... You mean he might get fired? Now, now, Leroy, there's no reason to be alarmed. You mean he might lose his job and he might not get paid anymore? Not exactly. He, um... Uh... You have nothing to worry about, my boy. You and Marjorie will always have a roof over your head. Who wants a roof? He hasn't done his Christmas shopping. <laughs> he hasn't even bought my model airplane yet. Now, Leroy, your uncle isn't going to lose his job. That's right, Leroy. I was only kidding. Why don't you go to bed, my boy? I will in a minute. Don't worry about your uncle. Why don't you shut up, Floyd? You've said enough already. I... Ah, for the love... Ah, this whole thing gives me a pain. Look... Let me go up there and talk to Gildersleeve. All right. Fine. If you're sympathetic. That's right, Floyd. You've got to be sympathetic. And tactful. I am tactful. Go on, sit down in the parlor. I'll have him down here in one minute flat. Well, if he comes down, let me know, will you please, Judge? Because if he does, he'll want to eat immediately. I'll let you know, Bertie. Well, you we might as well go in and sit down, I guess. There. Well, I suppose you children are looking forward to the holidays. Yes, Judge. Uh, 
Do you think Uncle will listen to Mr. Munson? It's hard to say what your uncle will do, my dear, in his present mood. We'll just see. I hope Floyd don't gum it up. Well, Floyd's pretty cagey. I don't know. Maybe you should have gone, Peavy. I think Floyd will bring home the bacon. I'm doubtful. You've got to deal just so with Gildersleeve. It's an art in itself. I won't deny that. You've just got to tell him. You've got to tell him just Hey, what... here's Floyd coming back. Oh, he certainly didn't take long. Maybe he said just the right thing. Maybe he did. Well, Floyd, what's the good word? I give up. I positively give up, that's all. No, it's not as bad as all that. I was afraid you wouldn't get the right approach, Floyd. What'd you say? Were you sympathetic? Sure. I told him if he didn't go to work tomorrow, the mayor was going to fire him. <laughs> you call that tactful? I told you to be sure and be tactful. Well, I saved the tactful part for later. <laughs> and what was your tactful approach? I asked him if he wanted to play poker. Well, that's a good idea. Just friendly. Sure. I told him we had a game down here and wouldn't he like to sit in. He didn't answer. And I told him we only had four players and the game was no good without him. No answer. So then I said if he'd come down, we'd let him play spit in the ocean every time it was his deal. <laughs> He didn't even answer that, so I walked out. Well, I'll be darned. It's not going to be easy, gentlemen. Easy? <laughs> Can't be done. Well, at least we don't have to play spit in the ocean. <laughs> well, I'd have been glad to play it. For him? Chief, why don't you go up and put this thing to him man to man? Well, if, if you think I'm the best qualified... No question about it. You're so sincere. Well, I'll try. I appreciate your confidence, Judge. I'll try to appeal to his better nature. His what? Give him the third degree. Oh, Commissioner. Mr. Gildersleeve. It's Chief Gates, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> well, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. I'll... Just say what I have to say, and you can act upon it as you see fit. Mr. Gildersleeve, all the members of the Jolly Boys Club are here tonight. They're here because you, a fellow member, are in trouble. We're your friends, and we want to help you. And at this Christmas tide, when all mankind... Uh, <clears throat> at this Christmas tide... When all mankind is full of brotherly love, when the spirit of good fellowship... <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, be reasonable. I only want to... <laughs> By golly, if I was Bertie, I'd keep him on bread and water. Chief, are you all right? What did I tell you, Chief? It can't be done. You're right, Floyd. He's impossible. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I'd like a word with Mr. Gildersleeve, if no one objects. I know whereof I speak, Phoebe. I know Gildersleeve like a book. You'll be wasting your breath. Well, it's my breath, George. <laughs> now, go ahead. Be careful, Phoebe. I think he's delirious. Delirious nothing. He's just a cantankerous jackass. But then he always has been. What are we going to do, Judge? My advice is to do nothing further tonight, my dear. Perhaps he'll have come to his senses by morning... If not, I'll try to convince the mayor he's sick. But what if you can't convince him? What if he calls Unky on the phone and Unky says something terrible? Would he be fired? Now, now, don't get excited. Your uncle could always get another job. Yeah? Where? Oh. <laughs> I thought you'd gone to bed, Leroy. I found it. Don't worry, Leroy. Don't you worry, Marge. I'll take care of you. Nobody's going to have to take care of anybody. Of course not. As a matter of fact, we need a custodian at the department right now. What's a custodian? A janitor. Oh! Now, now, Marjorie, control yourself. If we... Oh, oh Marge, here he comes. Okay. Well, I'll be done. Peavy did it. Well, sure enough, the great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Yes, dear, I left a note for the milkman. 
And I heard Caesar chirping, so I put some fresh water in his cage. You know, I was telling you about the little piece of psychology I pulled off with Mr. Gildersleeve this evening. (laughs) Sir, old Richard was pretty smart. You remember at breakfast I showed you the item in the paper about Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, the darn fool decided he'd stay home till the mayor apologized to him. So he had to coax him to change his mind. (laughs) You see, everybody tried. Judge Hooker and Floyd and Chief Gates. Nobody could budge him. But finally, I went up to his room. I used a clever bit of psychology. Now, I've been telling you there's a lot of psychology in the pharmaceutical line. And I figured out that Mr. Gildersleeve would believe just what he wanted to believe. So what do you think I told him? I said, asleep. Oh, I never will tell her. I wonder if it was wrong to fib to Mr. Gildersleeve like that. Seems to me a little fib in the right mm-hmm. place never hurt anybody. Still, I... I might as well be on the safe side. <clears throat> In place of the regular commercial message, the Kraft Foods Company wants me to tell you something about the Citizen Marine Corps. The Citizen Marine Corps is being recruited to provide a reserve force of specially trained citizens to discourage aggression and guard the peace. The Citizen Marine Corps offers training in highly specialized military and civilian subjects to men between the ages of 17 and 32. Special age concessions are made for honorably discharged veterans. Citizen Marine Corps members live at home, receive pay, are eligible for promotion and commissions, and enjoy the prestige and traditions of the Marine Corps. Get all the facts about this Marine Reserve organization from any Marine Corps office, or write Division of Reserve, Headquarters, United States Marine Corps, Washington 25, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, Harold Perry, star of The Great Gildersleeve, was absent from this performance because of illness. The first time in the history of The Great Gildersleeve. Don't think we didn't miss him as much as you did. We're happy to say that he's feeling much better this evening and will surely be with us next week. Good night, Uncle Mort. Mort. Take care of yourself. Good night, everybody. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. Tonight's story was written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wald saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of a complete line of famous quality food products. Tomorrow night, Jimmy Durante will be Al Jolson's guest on the Kraft Music Hall, heard over most of these same NBC stations. Don't miss the fun. Remember, tomorrow night... See your local paper for the exact time. And be sure to listen next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further Adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Most everyone likes macaroni and cheese, especially if it's fluffy light and has a fine cheddar cheese flavor through and through. You can make macaroni and cheese just like that in only seven minutes cooking time with Kraft Dinner. Every package of Kraft Dinner contains quick-cooking macaroni and golden Kraft grated, enough to make four big servings. And mmm, mmm, it's downright delicious. So when you shop, get several packages of Kraft Dinner. It's economical, it's quick-cooking, and it makes marvelous macaroni and cheese. Look for the yellow and blue package that's plainly marked Kraft Dinner. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.